What's going on guys? My name is Jacob Bennett with Bulldog Analytics and today we're going to be discussing storage modes in Power BI. Now we're going to take some time defining each and walking through some examples so that you can understand when each storage mode should be leveraged. This is one of those topics that's pretty vital to an understanding of the Power BI ecosystem and I believe all Power BI analysts should have a pretty good understanding on so I hope that this video can serve as a good resource to come back to. Now the four different storage modes in Power BI as I'm going to present them today are import, live connection, direct query, and mixed or composite mode, which is essentially a mixture of import and direct query tables in a single model. Now in this last section, we're also gonna talk about dual storage mode at the table level and why this is an important topic to grasp when combining import and direct query tables in a single model. All right, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's start off with some definitions. First, what is a storage mode? Well, a storage mode in Power BI determines where data is stored and how data gets from the source to your model or report. A couple of things we'll keep in mind as we define each mode to determine which we need to use in any given scenario is query performance, data size, and data latency expectations, meaning how close to real-time data is required in your reporting when compared to the source. Now you can see which storage mode your overall data model is using by going to your report view and looking at the bottom right of your screen. To see the storage mode your individual tables are using, you can see this by hovering over the table in your data pane, hovering over the table in your model view, and also by clicking on the table and breaking out advanced in the properties pane. Now live connection is a bit of an exception here, but if the overall data model is in live connection, then you know your individual tables are too. When hovering over these tables, it actually won't show a storage mode in live connection, but rather it'll show some analysis services server under the data source, and the advanced section of your properties pane will show the storage mode as it's set up in the shared semantic model you're connected to, but the whole properties pane, including the storage mode, will be grayed out, indicating a live connection. Another thing to pay attention to in this screen is the color of the header bar on the table itself in the model view. No header bar is going to indicate that the table is in an import storage mode. A blue header bar is going to indicate direct query storage mode, whether locally in your report or at the source via a live connection. And lastly, a dashed blue bar will indicate what's called dual storage mode, which as mentioned is something we'll discuss in our mixed or composite mode discussion towards the end of this video. All right, let's go ahead and define each storage mode. First, import mode. Import mode is a locally established data model downloaded and stored in memory, allowing for very fast performance. Second, live connection. Live connection allows for a real-time connection to a semantic model where no local data exists. And when I say no local data, this includes the data structure or any metadata such as field formatting changes. All the data elements mirror that of the source it's connected to. Third, direct query. Direct query also allows for real-time connection to a database or Power BI semantic model where queries are sent to the source every time a visual reloads. A local component also exists in direct query models, and this is where it differs from live connection. In this local model, the data structure and certain limited changes to the data model, such as field formatting, are allowed, along with limited DAX functionality and the ability to introduce additional data sources. Fourth and last, we have composite mode or mixed mode. Mixed mode is an import direct query hybrid mode where a local model exists that allows for direct query tables and import tables to exist alongside each other. All right, now that we know what storage modes are and we've provided a definition for each, let's take a deeper dive by starting off with the first storage mode on our list, import storage mode. Import is probably the most common storage mode and is default when connecting to most data sources, including a simple Excel or CSV file, or really any file or query you're working with. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the definition, import is stored in memory. So what this means is the data actually gets loaded into your PBIX file and is stored locally. Because the data is hosted in the file's memory, storing and reading data in import increases the overall performance of accessing and retrieving data. In this storage mode, the only time Power BI will query the underlying data source is during refresh processes. This differs from live connection and direct query, where the queries get sent back to the source every time a visual loads without requiring a report refresh to be configured on the report, but we'll get into that more in a minute. 
Some of the big pros of import is the performance of the visuals as mentioned. There's also no limitation on transforming and shaping your data in Power Query Editor, where direct query is limited in this sense, and all features in the modeling view and DAX functionalities are open to the report builder. I'll mention that if you're working with very large data tables in the ballpark of tens or hundreds of millions of rows or more, it's important to consider the resulting file size if you were to use import, as well as the potential refresh time and impact on your Power BI service capacity. Because depending on the impact, along with your goals around real-time data and performance, something like direct query might be better suited for you, which again we'll talk about more in just a minute. Now there are features that can help to optimize a large import model such as incremental refresh or leveraging the storage format for large semantic models if you have Power BI Premium, as well as some other tools, but I will cover that in another video. Alright, let's look at a quick example of how you'd add an import source to your report. The first example I've already added here is a text file. Any file you query as a table in your data model is going to automatically be set to import storage mode because any other option isn't possible without some sort of database or server. Let's try and add a SQL Server table into my model as import. I'm going to use an example I've loaded into SQL Server for my laptop using a local DB instance. If you're interested in starting the process of building a database or practicing SQL using files from your own machine, then I've got a short but comprehensive video walking you through getting started with this process, and I hope you check it out. Okay, so as you can see, once the SQL Server connection screen pulls up, I've got the option to select Import or Direct Query as my data connectivity mode. Import is obviously what we'd want to choose to store our data in memory, but let me select Direct Query to show one other place in Power Query Editor where you might be prompted to switch to an Import Storage mode. Alright, now that I've gone through the process of loading in the data with a direct query connection, I'm going to add a transformation step that isn't supported in direct query mode. Note that direct query in Power Query Editor is only compatible with very basic data transformations. Anytime you start making substantial changes or additions to your data in Power Query, you'll see this note on the screen that one of your steps is not supported in direct query mode, and then it'll give you an option to switch your table to import. Once you do this and then you close and apply in the top left, you'll see in your data model that the data is now indeed in import mode. Keep in mind that setting a storage mode to import is an irreversible operation and you won't be able to switch it back to direct query. If you do want a source like this one coming from a database to revert back to direct query for whatever reason, you'll actually need to start the process over by deleting your import model and then reconnecting to the source where you can select direct query as your connectivity mode. Alright, next up, live connection. Now if you're working for a company or you've been given access to build off a pre-built Power BI semantic model, or maybe you've built your own semantic model and connected to it because you want to reuse the same data over and over again for multiple reports to reduce the data redundancy, then we know that our storage mode, at least initially, is going to be live connection. Live connection allows you to connect to one of these pre-built models and craft reports without having to build any sort of local model or go through the process of sourcing the data and piecing together relationships for a model for each report individually. Now I'd like to mention there are a couple data sources that technically use live connection, but for today's discussion I'm going to stick to the pre-built Power BI semantic models that exist in the Power BI service. These were previously called Power BI shared datasets and sometimes still get referred to as such, so I'll probably use these terms interchangeably. To create a report using Live Connection, you'll go to either the Get Data or One Lake Data Hub options in the data section of your home toolbar, and you'll select Power BI Semantic Models, which is going to list out any shared models that you've been granted access to from your Power BI service capacity. If you want more insights on building out and publishing a simple semantic model and connecting to them, I've got another video up around this topic, so feel free to reference that. You'll see that I've already connected to a semantic model here, and when you do connect, you'll see the live connection is indicated across the bottom of your PBIX. It'll state connected live to the Power BI semantic model, and then it'll give a name and workspace location of the connection being made. As mentioned, we're connecting to a pre-built model here with no local components whatsoever, so live connection ends up being a high-performing and streamlined connection type with queries pulling data into your visuals from the source in real time. And I say real time as there truly is a live connection established between your report and the source shared dataset where the data moves seamlessly between the shared dataset and your report. No refresh configuration on the service is required. All that being said, there are some significant limitations that honestly keep me from ever using live connection in a production report. 
The main limitations to call out are one, no data transformation or modeling can occur within your local file, which means you can't bring in any additional sources of data alongside the shared semantic model you're connected to. Two, you can't change the data type, default summarization, or format of any of the fields, which includes adding comma delimiters or dollar signs, etc. Three, and lastly, DAX functionality is going to be extremely limited. For example, you can't create custom calculated columns using DAX language, which as you can see on my screen, the option is grayed out. These setbacks of the live connection mode is where direct query comes into play. Now one additional thing to note before moving on to the direct query section is that attempting to source two Power BI semantic models alongside each other in live connection will actually require that you switch to direct query mode when adding the second connection. I personally don't build too many reports off multiple semantic models, but it is required occasionally and I wanted to mention this here in this section. Alright, next up, direct query. Similar to Live Connection, there's no data tables stored locally in your Power BI file and it's all feeding live from the connected shared dataset. In fact, this aspect of the storage mode is almost identical to Live Connection, where queries are sent every time a visual loads resulting in near real-time report data to match the source without requiring a report refresh. The big difference here for Direct Query versus Live Connection is that a report using Direct Query will store the metadata of the underlying data, so think the table names, relationships, field names, formatting changes, as well as calculated columns using DAX, but the actual data values are still being queried directly from the source. Alright, let's look at some examples. From a Power BI desktop perspective, you can have a model in Direct Query that has all its tables sourced from a server with the data connectivity mode of Direct Query selected, but more commonly you'll see a Direct Query storage mode when connected to a Power BI semantic model. As we just mentioned when discussing live connection, connecting to a Power BI semantic model will always initially result in a live connection. To switch this from Live Connection to Direct Query, you'll see an option at the bottom of your screen next to the connection information that states, Make Changes to this Model. You'll also see this option when selecting the Modeling tab at the top of your screen and navigating to the far right option. When you select this option, it'll indicate a Direct Query connection is required and that making this switch to add a local model is a permanent change. Once you click Add Local Model and navigate through the subsequent screen, your report will now indicate it's in a direct query storage mode at the bottom. Let's also take a peek at the Power BI service to see how things appear from that perspective. As you can see from my screen, the Live Connection Demo Report is a standalone report where no data or schema lives within the report as everything is being queried as is from the source dataset. Therefore, no separate dataset or local model aside from the source dataset is required. You can also see here in Lineage View that our Live Connection example report is a direct connection back to the source dataset. The Direct Query Demo report, on the other hand, has its own dataset, or local model as they're often called, where this new layer in your report lineage houses the local metadata specific to your report, along with any additional data tables you query into your report. So there's kind of this layer that sits underneath your report storing all of this information. I want to reiterate that while Live Connection is a perfectly fine connection type, most of my Power BI reports I source from a shared Power BI semantic model ultimately get switched to direct query so I can control the formatting and some other elements of the report. Lastly, mixed or composite mode. This storage mode is essentially a hybrid storage mode between direct query and import mode. The local element of your direct query report we talked about actually prompts the creation of a local model specific to just your report. We just walked through an example of that. Because we've essentially diverged from the source dataset and created another layer on top of that as we saw in the lineage view, this local dataset also allows for additional data sources to be imported alongside your dataset or established using direct query alongside your dataset. Now note that any additional sources you bring in will more than likely require establishing relationships in the modeling. I've got a video around bringing in additional data alongside a Power BI semantic model if you want to check that out, but it's important to consider the storage mode of the new table you are bringing in. Now the best practice for sourcing additional data from a server location is to connect via direct query if you're already connected to a Power BI semantic model in direct query. But there are instances, for example, when you're connected via direct query to a shared data set and you need to bring in an Excel file or some other source that only allows for an import storage mode. In this case, relating your new import table to a direct query table will result in what's called a weak relationship. Now I'll get into this topic in a separate video, but basically there can be major limitations and implications around performance, limited DAX functionality, and if the data being visualized is even accurate. 
All that being said, any import to direct query relationships in your model need to be limited or at least closely considered and tested. Now the last thing I want to touch on is something I mentioned at the beginning of this video, which is dual storage mode. Before I define what it is, consider a scenario where you've got a report containing both direct query and import tables, and you need for your new table to connect with both of these in a strong manner, meaning without the limitation that results from a weak relationship. Well, dual storage mode is your solution here. As mentioned, dual is essentially an import direct query hybrid mode for table storage that essentially creates two copies of the table, one in import mode, which keeps the data in memory for quick reference, and then one in direct query mode, which without getting too technical, allows for your dual table to play nice with both your direct query tables and your import tables. I'll keep it at that for now, but at some point I'll make a separate video diving into the intricacies of using tables in dual storage mode. All right, so a quick recap of everything we've talked about today. We've got live connection, which is just an out of the box, stripped down connection directly to a Power BI semantic model where all the data comes into your report as is, formatting and all, which limits DAX functionality. We've got import storage mode, which as a reminder is stored in memory for great performance and also has all Power Query, modeling and DAX features available to you as the report or semantic developer. Next, direct query. This is similar to live connection in that data gets sourced real time from the source data set, but it also has a layer that sits underneath the report called a local model that stores all things related to the data model schema, formatting choices, DAX calculated columns, etc. Lastly, mixed or composite mode. Now as a reminder, this is a hybrid mode between import and direct query tables, and it's the mode that results when an import table or tables get added to a direct query data model or vice versa. It doesn't really matter which comes first, just that both exist in the same model. All right, guys, that's all I've got for today around the storage modes discussion in Power BI. I hope that I presented it in a concise and easy-ish to understand manner that you're able to come back to and again use as a resource in the future. If you like this kind of uh, Power BI data analytics content, then I hope you can like and subscribe, follow along, share with your friends and colleagues, and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye.